This is a Ferret. It's an armored military vehicle that was made throughout the 1950s and 60s for use by the British Army, who used it all the way through the 1980s. In hostility, in war zones, in combat areas. Today I'm going to drive it around suburban Nashville. Yes, that's right. I've flown to Nashville to borrow this ferret from a viewer because down here in Tennessee, they let you drive this thing on the street. Up in the Northeast where I live, you have to have a permit to sneeze. But in Tennessee, they're like, does it have wheels? Does it have lights? Did you pay your registration fees? All right, go ahead, drive it on the street. So this thing has a license plate and it's completely legal to drive on the street even though it has no readily apparent doors. So here's what I'm gonna do. First, I'm gonna take the ferret out on the roads here in suburban Nashville, and I'm gonna use it to run a few errands. Then I'm gonna bring it back here, and I'm gonna show you all of its unusual quirks and weird features, of which I'm sure there are very, very many. And of course, if you wanna know more about my experience driving a 60-year-old military vehicle around suburban Tennessee, click the link below to check out my column on autotrader.com oversteer. Right now, time to get on the road. But first, I have to get inside. That's not that easy to do. This thing does not have any door. <laughs> so I got in, but then I had to learn how to operate the thing. The owner gave me a quick tutorial. It's more complicated than you might think. And then it was time for me to do a few laps around a parking lot. Ready? Oh my god, what have I done? Oh, this is the craziest thing I've ever driven! I can't see! I can't hear! The driving position is horrible! What is this? How did British troops drive this? Oh my god, I cannot believe this thing! The steering position is horrible! Why is the steering wheel facing down? It's absurd! It's a stupid Since I was clearly experienced and in a sane and reasonable frame of mind, I decided it was time for the next adventure, going to get gas, which meant kicking it out on the road. Alright, we're on the public road! Oh my god, I'm so scared!
the gas station and climbed out of the ferret, I was, perhaps not surprisingly, the single most popular person there. <laughs> Every place I look, someone's taking a picture of me. There's a woman over there trying to be surreptitious about it. It's very funny. This is not a vehicle you see every day at the gas station, I guess. It's an old, it's an old armored military car. Yeah, there's no doors, it's all armored, so you gotta climb in through the roof. No, yeah, no, it was a little earlier than that, like 50, 60s, this is the 62. Alright. Tank uh, is all full, and so now it's time to get going again. Ugh. I got to be good at that. Let's do it. <laughs> yes, after attracting an enormous amount of attention at the gas station, it was time to move on to my next errand. hungry, so I figured now it's time for lunch. Now I'm sitting in the turret position, so I'm gonna order something from the drive-thru. Can I get a, a chicken nuggets and a sundae, please? Like a six-pack of nuggets and a sundae? Uh, what's that? Uh, that's it. Yeah. All right, thank you. Needless to say, I wasn't a usual sight in the drive-thru line. some nuggets. <laughs> Hi there. Yeah, here you go. Sorry, it's a little far. Thank you very much. This thing can go up to 50 miles an hour, but I don't know that I'd like to be sitting up here when it's doing 50. The crazy part is it can do also 50 in reverse. Hey there. How are you? Thank you very much. <laughs> huh? No, no, it's good, I'm good. I got sauce in the tank. Thanks, right. thanks very much, appreciate it. Thank you. With my errands complete, it was now time to drive the ferret back to its owner's garage. Nobody wants to go in front of you when you're driving this thing. And eventually, I started to get the hang of it. 25, 25! It wasn't all easy. Oh, the brakes are so bad. Oh, they're really bad right now. Oh, oh my God. Those are some brakes. Fortunately, I got the ferret back safe and sound. Okay, so you've seen the ferret in action. Now it's time for me to show you all of the weird quirks and features on this thing I've discovered in the last couple of hours behind the wheel. I'll start with these things. You probably saw them mounted on the front. Those would be grenade launchers, and there's six of them, three on each side, controlled with switches marked one through six inside the cabin. Next up, let's discuss the gun. It's fake, of course. It was a real gun, but it's been demilitarized and cut into pieces and then stuck back together again. The only sounds it makes are these. <laughs> Next up is the windshield and its hilariously small windshield wiper. Now, I told you the windshield is the size of an iPad, and really it is. Here are my fingers for scale. The side windows are armored plates. They can be raised when you're just driving around the suburbs, or they can be lowered in combat. When they're down, this is all you can use to see. 
The thing does have headlights and, strangely enough, my personal favorite, turn signals. Inside, this is the view you get from the driver's seat. Note how the steering wheel points downwards towards your feet. These are the incredibly old school controls you used to start and operate the ferret, and here's the one for the turn signals. And no, it doesn't cancel automatically. Yes, the parking brake is in the center of the incredibly small footwell, and over on the side is the gear lever. First and second are up at the top, third is on the bottom, fourth is on the upper right, and the last gear really is marked top, neutral is in the middle. The rest of the interior is a hodgepodge of complex wires and connections that do God knows what. Oh, and there are two seats on either side of the driver. Count the guy up top, and this thing is the world's most cramped four-seater. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a comprehensive tour of the Ferret. On my YouTube channel, I primarily make videos with exotic sports cars and brand new models and with my own cars. But folks, when you're given an opportunity to drive around in this thing, well, that's an opportunity you just don't pass up. And so now you know, and I know, what it's like to drive around suburban Nashville in a 60-year-old British military vehicle built for war zones. These are good nuggets. Are good nuggets.